In this video, we're gonna talk about the cost of living in good old Buckeye, Arizona. And if you're wondering where Buckeye got its name, you are probably right. It was from somebody in Ohio that settled there and ended up naming the city after their home state moniker. My name's Ryan Meeks, I'm a realtor here in Arizona, so if you're looking to make the move, I can help you, whether it's the Southeast Valley of Gilbert or the West Valley of Buckeye, I get around. And if it's your first time to my channel, feel free to subscribe, I put out a ton of helpful videos, I have a lot of neighborhood walkthroughs, and if you have a comment or if you wanna see a neighborhood that I don't have posted, feel free to put it in the comments down below, or you can go ahead and shoot me an email. My information is below, you can text me. I'm pretty outgoing and pretty responsive, so feel free, go ahead, do it. So we're talking about the cost of living in Buckeye, Arizona, and the reason I bring up Buckeye is I've been doing a lot of business out there, and guess what? It's the second fastest growing city in America, just behind Frisco, Texas. Good old Frisco. Buckeye right now has a population around 90,000, and that has grown, it's 2021, so 90,000, it's grown from 70,000 in 2019. So that's huge. <laughs> Buckeye is located in the far west valley against the White Tank Mountains. So it's got a very picturesque backdrop. It's 393 square miles. So it's a huge area. Gilbert, Arizona in comparison is 63 square miles. And right now, Gilbert has 262,000 residents. So quite a little more population density in the Gilbert location. In Buckeye, there's gonna be a lot more open space and uh, their population's gonna explode there, I'm sure, because it's just a growing, growing area. So let's talk about the cost of living. That's why I came to this, uh, this video and this was actually given to me by one of the salespeople at Sun City West. She has her cost of living sheet that she gives the clients that are moving there because obviously there's a lot of out-of-staters here and you really have no idea what it costs to live in Arizona, let alone Buckeye. So let's go through that. So one of the most important things for people, I know for my parents, I still get phone calls from them on a monthly basis with problems. Uh, and that is with cable TV internet. So cable TV internet costs, uh, Cox total gonna be about 180 per month. And if you break it down, you got about $50 for internet. The rest is gonna be for phone, if you wanna have a landline, and then also cable TV. Cable TV really adds up. So what I recommend you do is, I, I think I pay between 100, 120 bucks, and it's gonna be the same valley wide. So uh, just get streaming internet, fast streaming internet, and then just go ahead and uh, get the streaming services. Those work really well, and I just think it's a better plan. So get the streaming services, get rid of that cable, cut the cord, right? So next up, we have a pretty big expense, and that's gonna be water, sewer, and trash. So in Buckeye, it's gonna be $40 for garbage, $40 for sewer, and water's about 75 bucks per month on average, and that is for just a desert landscape uh, home. So that's a lot of money. So what you'll notice is something to keep in mind, on the west side, it's gonna be a bit more expensive for water than on the east side. So if you look at the city of Buckeye's website, there's actually a base rate of $33. So that's the base rate, and then it's $4 per 1,000 gallons of water. Uh, sewer's got a base rate of $29, and then it's $2 per gallon on top of that. So quite a big expense. How do I know this is a big expense? Well, if you compare that to Gilbert, Gilbert's price is $120 per 1,000 gallons, so $1.20 per 1,000 gallons. And then based on the meter size, it could be anywhere from $25 to $35 base price. So very similar uh, base price. Our bill is usually around $80 to $100 total in Gilbert, depending upon how much water we use to water our lawn. This month, actually, we just got our bill. It was $175. So that's in, that's in Gilbert. Um, so if that would have been in Buckeye, probably may have come out to like $300. So definitely going to pay more. Uh, for water in Buckeye, in the West Valley, than in the East Valley. So HOA dues in Buckeye, it depends on where you live. On the low end, you can get into an HOA about 25 bucks a month. And on the high end, it can be over $400. There's a gated section of Verado that has like a private pool and being in a gated area is gonna be a little more expensive anyways. 
So you just gotta figure out where you wanna be, look at those HOA uh, fees, and some of the websites, I know my website will tell you like the semi-annual cost, so it might say like, um, you know, in this case, if it was 400 bucks, 2,400 for a semi-annual fee. So you gotta make sure that you bring, break that down to a, a monthly fee. So seen anywhere from 25 bucks up to $400, really just depends on the amenities. And that's gonna be pretty much valley wide. So one thing to keep in mind is when you purchase a home here, there are transfer fees, there's a capital improvement fees, some places have a recreation fee, and those are all HOA fees, and those are one-time fees that you'll pay when you purchase. So the transfer fees are, you know, can typically be anywhere from 50 to 250, and that's a one-time fee. Uh, capital improvement fees I've seen as high as like 2,500, and then, um, Recreation fees could also be on top of those capital improvement fees. So that could be half a percent of the purchase price like it is in Verado. Verado, as you can see, is gonna cost you a little bit to, to live there. So half a percent of the purchase price, if you're purchasing a $400,000 home, it's gonna be a $2,000 fee for you to purchase there. And that is a negotiable item though. You can get the seller to pay it, but in this market, uh, we're finding that the buyer is paying that a lot. Or you could adjust your offer. Instead of offering 400, you could offer 398 and then tell them you'll pay that fee. So a few different ways to do it. But of course the buyer's paying it right now and uh, as well as a pretty high premium if it's a desirable home. Gas, let's talk about gas. So gas is gonna be about $20 in the summer months and $60 in the winter months. We usually use gas, and you probably heard this uh, in some of my other videos, but we have a fireplace, and we pretty much turn our fireplace on every night in December, eh, yeah, December, January, February, we just love it, and it heats pretty much uh, the section of the home that we really want it to. And then obviously, cook with gas, there are some electric ranges, but uh, people mostly prefer gas out here, so there's, a lot of gas ranges and then uh, the furnace you'll run the furnace with and you know you'll have a gas furnace so that will um, typically be run in February maybe for two weeks so it doesn't really get too cold here it will get down to a just above freezing but for the most part you won't need uh, you won't need to use that furnace too much so how much is landscaping well landscaping can be anywhere from 40 bucks if you have it twice a month up to $200 per month. It really just depends on the size of your yard and I wish I can give you a proper estimate on that, but it's going to depend. Taxes here, taxes, they say are 1% of the purchase price, but if you look like I have here, you can see that on this particular tax bill, uh, it's really not 1% of the purchase price. So you, typically I've seen taxes across the valley pretty much stay at anywhere from um, 0.68 percent of the purchase price. So if you're buying a million dollar home, you're looking at roughly $6,800 in taxes. Now there's a thing called the CFD and that's called a Community Facilities District. And what that is, is it's a bond that pays for the infrastructure and that is calculated within your tax. There's actually two types of this, two types of these CFDs. So one has to be paid off and runs with the home. That's called a special assessment bond. So if you were to purchase a new build, uh, you're gonna get hit with this bond right up front. So these aren't associated with your property taxes. They're not associated with your HOA dues. They are just totally separate. And I've seen them range anywhere from like 2,800 upwards to $11,000. And there's something that you, you get billed on semi-annually and you either have to pay them off right away or you can pay them semi-annually, but those need to be paid. And if you're going to sell the home, that CFD is gonna run with the property. Now there are other bonds that are called general obligation bonds or general obligation CFDs. These run with the taxes and you can see here from my examples I have how it affects the tax rate. These are called general obligation CFDs like I said and uh, these will go into your taxes but if your tax rate you know, mixed with the CFDs, it's still gonna be very similar across the valley. So I wouldn't, you know, with the general obligation CFDs, uh, I wouldn't fret about it. Your tax rate is still gonna be, hopefully, you know, in, in normal circumstances, anywhere from uh, multiply 0.65 to like 0.8% of the purchase price uh, in Buckeye. So very similar to the East Valley, similar valley wide on uh, your taxes there. So wouldn't worry too much about the general obligation bonds, but obviously those special assessment bonds, 
you know, that's gonna be a pretty penny, especially if you're moving into a new community and you have to pay that bond. Very similar to, um, you know, some of these HOA recreation fees. And I've seen some other fees in HOAs where you have to pay to uh, actually join the country club. So it's, yeah, it's just the part of life here. Electric, so electric on a 2,000 square foot single story homes comes out to about 170 bucks per month and that's on average. So the summer months are obviously gonna be a little bit higher. Winter months are gonna be a little bit lower. So on average, about $170 per month. And this is for a, a home that's 11 years old and the newer homes are gonna be about 30% more efficient. So you take $170 and multiply that by 66% and that's what you will get uh, on one of the newer homes because they have some uh, cathedral insulation and they also have a little bit better uh, blown in cellulose insulation than homes that were built in the late 90s, early 2000s. So one person I know in Buckeye only comes down for the winter months. He's got his AC set to uh, 85 May through September. His average is about 65 bucks per month, not too bad. But of course, he's not there in the summer, so it's, uh, it's gonna be a little less than those of us living here. Now, after I said all that, you're probably wondering what the home prices here are, right? So the median right now in Buckeye is 380. Two years ago, this was just 230,000. So that's a pretty significant price increase. Price per square foot on average is about $196 per square foot. So if you're buying a 2,000 square foot home, you're looking at roughly 392,000. Hey, thanks for watching. For more videos on escaping to Arizona, just click that subscribe button to stay in the loop.